Hello, I'm Russ, and welcome to this second in Cadarn series of kit videos. Um, in this video, we're going to be looking at the JVC GY HM150E, or the HM150 as I'll call it throughout the video. The HM150 is a compact and flexible camera that meets a wide range of shooting needs. You can use it as a simple pick up point and shoot camera, or you can get quite in depth with the way you set it up and use it. It's perfect for recording interviews, events and documentaries and of all the cameras supported by Cadarn, it's the one that we recommend the most for those who want to get more involved and adventurous in their filmmaking. For the more advanced features there'll be follow-up videos later on in the series um, but in this video I'm going to focus on using the camera in auto mode um, and I'm going to cover everything that the camera has to offer in depth um, in this mode um, so you'll have all the information that you need to start using this very capable prosumer camera. To help you navigate the video, we've added some chapter buttons. If you want to review something specific or jump ahead, just click on one of the buttons here. But first things first, what do you get in the bag? Obviously you get the camera with the onboard microphone. I'll put that down there and then get the bag. You get several things in the bag, several accessories. Um, you get the battery and then you've got the battery charging unit. That just sits in there. You've got the mains power adapter, which plugs into the camera and into the mains, so you can run the camera off the mains power. And you've got several cables that you can connect to monitors. This is a composite cable that connects to an SD monitor. Um, and you've got a comp um, component cable, which you connect to a HD monitor. You've also got a SD card, which comes as standard as well. So that's everything that you get in the bag. You might also want to take out some other useful pieces of um, equipment when you take out the camera. Things like the a directional mic, um, a lavalier mic or a lapel mic, and then any relevant cables that you might need to connect those to the camera, like this XLR cable. Um, you might want to take some headphones so that you can monitor your audio as you're recording. And then, last but not least, you might want to take a tripod so that you've got a stable and steady shot. So they're all things that you can take with you um, in addition to the JVC. Okay, so now I'm going to go over the basics of the camera. Um, the HM150 has got lots of manual controls that might look intimidating, um, but in basic auto mode it's quite an easy camera to operate, so don't be put off by all the dials and buttons. Um, there really aren't anything you need to worry about at this point in time. Auto mode is just that, it's automatic. You can literally point and shoot with this camera. Um, and it's a great place to start with any camera, just so that you can get familiar with how it works and the basic layout of the buttons. Um, then when you feel more confident, you can start to use the manual controls. Before we go any further, you're gonna to need to get your um, recording medium. Um, the HM150 records onto SD cards, um, either high capacity cards or extended capacity cards. Um, these need to be class 6 or above, otherwise um, they won't be fast enough to keep up with the data transfer from the camera to the card. To insert the card you need to open up the SD card slot door on the side of the camera. Um, then you press the card in until you hear a click, which means that it's securely in place. Um, there are two slots here which work with each other in different ways. Um, and I'll go over the different ways in which they work later on in the SD card status section of this video. Um, one of the things to remember with uh, this camera is to close the SD card door um, to make sure that you don't get things like dust or dirt into the inner workings of the camera. The next thing we need to do is power the camera. So let's talk about the battery for a second. Um, the battery slots into this charge unit here like that. Um, you need to line up the teeth there with the metal contacts there. And then you plug this end into the mains. Um, when it's charging, this green light here should flash. Um, and when it's fully charged, it'll stop flashing. A full charge should last you about two hours of continuous recording time. To get the battery onto the back of the camera, you need to pull the eyepiece out and lift it up. And then that reveals that bit. Don't try to pull it up without pulling it out first um, because you might break the camera. Um, so that's a good thing to remember as well is with the camera, don't try to force anything. 
Um, if it doesn't feel like it's going to go, then don't force it. Find out why it won't go. So to slap the battery on, you need to look at the metal contacts there and line those up with the metal contacts there. And then you push that on and then slide it in. And you should hear it click into place. To remove the battery, you need to press this release button here, which is just above the battery. Um, you press that and then slide it back and then that comes off. If you don't press that and you try and force it off, you could damage the locking mechanism. There's these teeth here which slot in, so by pulling that off without pressing the release button, you could damage those. Um, so try not to do that. Um, if you're planning to record for a long period of time, then you might want to not use the battery and instead use this mains power adapter instead. Um, this plugs obviously into the mains um, and then this end plugs into the DC socket on the back of the camera just behind this flap. Pull that off and then this slots in there. And then that will give you continuous power so you don't need to worry about the battery running out at all. You can use this with the battery in place so if I put the battery in place there it doesn't make a difference but remember that this won't be charging the battery. To charge the battery you need to plug it into the battery charging unit. To turn the camera on, I'll just put this to one side, to turn the camera on you need to dial this silver coloured power dial down um, if you look here on the side, you can see there are some words where there's a line pointing to it. Um, at the moment, it's pointing to the off position. You've got standby or on, and then you've got cam media. So this line is indicating which mode you're in. At the moment, it's off. To turn it on, you need to press in the blue button. There's a blue button there. Press that in and dial it up. To turn it off, you press the blue button in and dial it down. Um, it, a really important point is if you don't press the blue button in when turning it on and off, the switch won't go, it won't dial up or down. Um, and don't try and force it again because that will break the camera. So remember, press the blue button in and dial it up. Press the blue button in and dial it down. Once it's turned on, you can turn it to a different mode by just pressing it down, pressing it down again. And that jogs between camera mode and media mode and you don't need to worry about pressing the blue button for that. Another thing to take note of is when you power the camera on, there's a small little red light which will appear here at the back of the camera. And that's just a very simple little indication that the camera's turned on and that you've got power running to it. Okay, now that the camera's turned on, um, I wanna check to see if it's in full auto mode. So to do this, you open up the LCD monitor here um, and you can see at the top here, it's got an M. Um, right in the middle there. That means that it's in manual mode and that's not how we want it. We want it to be in auto mode. Um, to switch the mode, you go to the side of the camera where you have a button there that says full auto. And if you press that, and then press it again, it'll switch to auto. I'll do that to the camera. So it's in auto mode at the moment. I'll switch it back to manual. So that's in manual now press the button and then press it again, it switches to auto. The other thing I wanna check is the focus. You can see here it says MF, that means it's in manual focus. Um, that means that you have to control the focus of the camera. Um, in auto mode, really what we want is for it to be in auto focus and to do that, we need to go back to the side of the camera and here we've got AF, MF. If you press that once, it should go to AF. I'll show you that on the screen. So it's in AF at the moment, press it, it goes to MF, press the button again, and it turns to AF, that's autofocus. Okay. Okay, now we're in full auto mode, um, and the camera's gonna do most of the work for you now, so you don't need to worry about anything like exposure, or white balance, or anything like that, um, and you can just concentrate on getting the footage that you need. Um, so next, let's have a look at the lens cover. On the front of the camera you'll notice there's a hood and there's a built-in lens cover in this. Good thing about that is that you can't lose lens cover because it's built in. Um, to open up the lens cover, which is something you'll want to do to record, there's a little switch here and it says open and closed. Um, switch it and it opens, close it and it closes. 
I'll do that to the camera. So that's open and that's closed. Um, when you're not recording, make sure that you close the lens cap just to keep dust and dirt off the lens. Okay, so we've looked at SD cards, we've looked at pairing the camera, um, we've looked at turning the camera on and off, and we've briefly looked at the LCD monitor here. Um, the LCD monitor is your main um, viewfinder, and that's what most people use when they're composing the shots. But you also have the option of using this eyepiece here. Um, remember when you're using the eyepiece to pull it out before you try to tilt it up. Sometimes it's useful to use the eyepiece, especially when you're filming outside um, and the LCD monitor is washed out by the sunlight. Um, the other thing to remember is that if you're running low on battery, um, closing the LCD monitor will save you power. Okay, if you're shooting handheld, um, it's useful to use the eyepiece as well because it helps you stabilize your shot. So if you've got your hand in there, you're cradling the camera there, this gives you a third point of contact so that you can brace the camera um, and get a smoother, steadier shot. And if you're just holding it like that, you've got one point of contact, which isn't great always. Okay, just underneath the eyepiece, you've got a small lever, which is the focus lever, and this adjusts the focus of the eyepiece um, so that you can make adjustments to suit your eyesight. Um, this won't have an effect on the focus of the lens itself, just what you see through here. Um, a good way to check to see if it's in focus um, is to look through there and you can see the LCD monitor's display um, and the readout, the digital readout on there. If that's out of focus, then the eyepiece is out of focus. So just use this lever just there to make those necessary adjustments. Okay, now let's go back to the LCD monitor and have a look at the information that you can see on there. Um, I like to use screen number two, um, which is the one that it's in at the moment. To change the screen, um, you need to press this button here, which is the display button. So if you press that, it will change which display it's giving you. And you can tell that you're in screen number two because you can see the audio meters here, um, as well as lots of other very relevant, important information. Okay, so now I'm gonna work clockwise around the screen and I'll go over each one of these symbols and explain to you what it means. Let's start here at the top um, where it says A. Um, as we've already mentioned, this means that we're in auto mode. Um, over here, we've got the time code and the time code um, tells you how long that you've been recording for. At the moment, it says we've got three hours, 44 minutes and four seconds. And right here at the end, you've got two frames. Um, so that tells you how long you've been recording for. Normally when you get the camera, that should be set to zero. Um, but it doesn't really make a difference whether it's set to zero or that. It's just a, a log of how long you've been recording for. Moving down, we've got the AF symbol, which means that we're in autofocus, um, which I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more in depth later on. Next to this, at the bottom of the screen, you've got the audio meters. Um, you really want to keep an eye on these whenever you're recording because it tells you whether your microphone is picking up sound or not. At the moment, you can see that bar bouncing up and down as I talk, which means that we're picking up audio on channel one, which is this microphone here. If you don't see anything moving, if that's not bouncing up and down, then your camera is not receiving any audio signal. And you really do want to figure out why that is because you don't want to record and not have sound. Okay, next to the audio meters, you've got the battery status symbol, which tells you how much power you've got left in your battery. Um, if you've got your camera plugged into the mains, then you'll see a plug symbol there instead. Okay, now I'm gonna focus on this section on the bottom left corner of the camera. Um, here you've got lots of information about the two SD card slots um, and what they're actually doing. Um, so right down here on the bottom corner, you've got the letters STBY, which stands for standby, and that's telling you that the camera is in standby mode. If I press record, those letters turn to REC, or record, rec, um, and that also turns red to indicate that it's recording. Um, slot A, which is where we've got an SD card, that also turns red, and that's telling you that it's recording to slot A. Um, if I press stop, that turns back to standby. Okay, above that, you've got two letters, A and B, um, which are your two SD card slots. 
You can see after the A there are some numbers. It says 227 min, which means that there's 227 minutes of record time left. And after B there's just some dashes, which is indicating that there is no SD card in there. Above A and B, you'll sometimes see the word um, dual or backup. Um, this is telling you which slot mode the camera is in and how it's going to record to the SD cards. Most of the time you won't see anything here and that's because the camera will be in series mode, which is the default mode. Um, when you're in series mode, this means that if you've got two SD cards in slot A and slot B, so one in slot A, one in slot B, what happens is that you record to slot A um, by default. When slot A is full, recording will then transfer over to slot B. While it's recording to slot B, you can open up the cover, take out the SD card, and then put in a fresh SD card, all while it's recording to slot B. Um, and then when slot B is full, it will then transfer back to slot A and continue recording there. This effectively gives you unlimited recording time. Moving up to the top left of the LCD monitor, you've got the um, record format information. Right at the very top there, you've got 1920 by 1080, which is your picture resolution, and that's recording in full HD. Um, 1920 stands for the amount of pixels that you've got running in a single line horizontally and then the 1080 um, is referring to the amount of pixels that you've got running down vertically so you've got 1920 horizontal pixels and then 1080 vertical pixels um, and in the whole frame you've got over 2 million individual pixels. You can choose low resolutions if you need to but we recommend that you stick to full HD. Just below the picture resolution, you've got information about your frame rate and the record quality or bit rate. Um, and these settings um, tell you how much information is being transferred from the camera to the SD card at any given moment. The frame rate here is set to 25 frames per second and the P after the 25 um, stands for progressive, which means that as every frame is recorded, it takes a single image, a single full frame. Um, the other way of recording video is to have it interlaced, which takes two halves of a picture and interlaces them. Um, and that's a, an old-fashioned way of recording video. Um, nowadays, the standard across the UK and Europe is to record in 25p, and that's full HD. Next to 25p, you can see the letters HQ, and that's the quality or the bitrate. Um, HQ meaning high quality. High quality records at 35 megabits per second, which is the highest setting on this camera. You can change all of these settings by going into the menu, um, but if you're not sure what you're doing, it's probably best to leave them as they are. Okay, so that's everything on the screen. Um, before I move on, I'm just gonna talk about these buttons on the side of the screen for a moment. Um, right at the very top, you've got the menu thumb button. Um, if you press that, that brings up the camera's main menu. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can fiddle with in this section, but I'm not gonna cover it because it's just too in depth and we don't have time. Um, Feel free to have a look at that in your own time, but do be aware that if you do change anything in the settings, then that can drastically affect the way that the camera records. If you ever do find yourself in the menu um, and you need to get out, just press the menu button again and that will take you back to the normal screen. In the middle here, you've got this lever which um, helps you navigate the menu. So if I go into the menu, you press down to move down, up, to move up, it's really intuitive and easy to use. Um, right is select and takes you into the menu. And if you press right again, so that burrows into the menu and back pulls you out of the menu. Um, if you press the button, the joystick in, the lever in, that is also a select button as well. So then right down here at the bottom, we've got a secondary record button, which you press once to start recording and you press it again to stop recording. So that's everything on the LCD monitor. Um, let's have a look now at the body of the camera and some of the buttons and controls that you've got um, and that you can use when recording in auto mode to improve the pitch quality. Okay, first of all, let's look at the uh, zoom control. Um, the primary zoom control is here on the side of the camera. Um, you press forwards on that to zoom in. That's marked T for telephoto. And you press backwards here um, to zoom out, and that's marked W for wide. Alternatively, if you look at the other side of the camera, you've got a switch here which controls the way the focus wheel works. If you switch that from focus to zoom, like so, 
and then you use this focus wheel that will zoom in and out of the shot. Um, if you do use that, don't forget to switch that back to focus when you want to control your focus manually. Just a note on using the zoom, I'd recommend that you only use it when you're actually composing your shot, not while you're in the middle of a take. There are loads of reasons why you should avoid using a zoom in a shot, but in a nutshell, it's going to make your video look cheap as it draws attention to the camera work and away from the content. When it comes to focusing with the HM150, you've got two options, autofocus and manual focus. Autofocus is pretty good and it's okay to use that when you're getting started with the camera. Um, it can also be really useful when you're filming in busy scenarios and things are changing unpredictably. Um, but once you're familiar with the camera, it's best to try and use the manual focus. It's easy to switch the camera from autofocus to manual focus. You just go to this button, as I pointed out earlier, and press it to switch between the two modes. If I open up the viewfinder, you can see at the moment it's in autofocus. If I press it again, it turns to manual focus. Just there, and press it again to auto. If I put it in manual focus, and then we look at the front of the camera, you can focus your camera with this focus wheel here. Um, if you are focusing manually, remember to have this switch set to focus and not to zoom. A good tip when you're trying to get your camera in focus is to zoom right in on the subject and to adjust the focus until you've got that pin sharp. So if it's a person, you can do that on the eyeballs, um, as I'm doing here. And then once that's in focus, you can zoom out and compose your shot. Here's another button that you might find useful. Um, it's the AE exposure button, just on the back of the camera there. Um, and this um, gives you the ability to control the exposure very basically while you're in auto mode. Sometimes even in auto mode, the camera might not expose the shot quite how you'd expect it to, and your picture might look too bright or too dark. For example, if there's a bright window in the background, the camera will adjust its exposure to that. Um, so whatever you're shooting will look too dark that's when you might want to use the AE exposure button. When you press the AE button, a symbol will appear on the bottom of the LCD monitor. So if I press that, it will go away, and if I press it, it comes back on. And that says AE plus zero. Um, if you go to the back of the camera, just beneath the AE button, there's a small little dial that's marked adjust volume. Um, if you press that up and down, the AE plus zero will go to AE plus one plus two, plus three, and then if you go down, it will say minus one, minus two, minus three. So by going to plus, it's gonna increase the exposure of your shot, brightening it, and if you go down, it's gonna decrease the exposure of your shot, darkening it. Once you're happy with the exposure, um, you can press the dial in, and that will lock the adjustment into place so that when you're shooting, you don't accidentally adjust that. To unlock it, you press the AE button, and that will unlock the setting, and then if you press that again, that will take you out of AE exposure and you'll be in full auto mode again. Another simple way that you can control the camera's exposure is by using the ND filter or the neutral density filter. It's just a switch here at the front of the camera, and to turn it on, you just switch it up, to turn it off, you switch it down. Um, the best way of thinking about the ND filter is as a pair of sunglasses for your camera. So it reduces the intensity of the light that's coming into the lens and hitting the camera's sensor. When you're filming out in bright sunlight, you can turn the ND filter on and that will darken the image, giving you more range. Um, it is very easy to leave the ND filter switched on, so if you are using it, make sure that you switch it off um, when you finish filming in sunlight. Okay, now let's have a look at the camera's sound recording capabilities. Um, when you're recording sound, you really wanna make sure that you're monitoring what you're recording. So you should always wear a pair of headphones. You can use any pair of headphones, really, um, but it's best to use a decent pair. Here we've got a pair that have got two mini jacks. If you're using a similar pair, remember not to use the one with the red band around it. That's for the microphone. Use the other one. And what you want to do is look at the camera and there's a flap here with a headphone symbol on it. Just pop that open. If I hold that like that, pop that open and then that just goes in there like so. A basic direction light comes with the camera, which is what you can see here. Um, when you get the camera, everything should be set up. 
um, and the, if you look here, the microphone should be plugged into the audio input one on the external audio unit, which is this thing here. To test that the microphone is set up properly, um, just tap on the end of the microphone softly. If I open up the LCD monitor, you'll be able to see the levels bouncing as I tap. Obviously you can see it when I'm talking, but if I tap it, you can see the levels jumping up and down. There shouldn't be a signal coming in on um, channel two because we don't have a microphone plugged into input two. If you want, you can easily remove this microphone um, and replace it with something better, like this one here. Um, to do that, you go to the audio unit and press in this button here. And as you press in, pull the XLR connection out. Then you go to this clamp, unscrew it, open it up, and take the microphone out. Put that over there. This clamp can take most directional microphones. Um, just be aware of the length of the microphone. If I clamp that in, because if it's too long, it'll start to appear in your shot and then you don't really want that in your shot. The only way you can really avoid that is to zoom in a little bit when you're composing your shot, just to crop that out. Um, to connect to that, you need an XLR cable. This one's a bit long, so if you've got a short one, use that. Plug the female end into the end of the microphone. And then the male end will go into input one. And you should hear it click into place like that. If you're filming outside, um, you can put on a windshield like this, um, but just be aware that that will almost certainly appear in your shot when you're filming. It's worth noting that there's uh, also a very basic stereo microphone just here on the top of the camera behind the lens. I don't know if you can see that there. Um, and while this won't give you the best sound, it is useful to know that it's there, just in case you find yourself struggling with the audio unit and the microphones. Um, to use this built-in microphone, all you need to do is disengage this audio unit. And to do that, you just need to unplug this connection here. So that unplugs. And then by doing that, this is out of the picture. It's just this microphone that is working now. Um, and you can even take this whole unit off by unscrewing this screw here. So if I unscrew that, and then to remove it, you just press it forward, that slides off, put that to one side. And the great thing about the camera in this sort of mode without the microphone attachment is that it's really small and portable, which might be useful in certain filming situations. Um, one thing to be aware of when you are using these microphones, this stereo microphone here, is that because it's built into the body of the camera, it will pick up on any handling sound. So if you're holding it, it will pick up on your hands. If you're zooming in and out, it will hear the lens moving. Um, so the best thing to do is put the camera on a tripod and try not to touch it too much. Okay, so now I'm gonna look at the external audio unit and all the switches and dials and tell you what each one of those does. Um, on the right side of the camera, you've got two XLR inputs um, where you can plug in two microphones. These will record two separate channels of sound to the SD card and your video file. So as default, you get a standard um, directional microphone plugged into input one and that should all be set up. If I wanted to plug in a secondary microphone, like this directional microphone, put that there. I just plug that into input two. So if we get the cable lined up and then press it in until it clicks. Now, if I look at the audio meters on the LCD monitor, you can see we're getting two channels of sound. If I tap on this one slightly, you can see that I'm getting um, a reading on channel two. If I put this out of the way, because it's so sensitive, and I do the same with this microphone, you can see that that's displaying on channel one. So now you've got two separate channels of sound on two separate microphones. Okay, so turning the camera around, let's look at the other side of the external audio unit where you've got all these switches and dials. 
Um, so let's start with the audio select set of switches and dials, which is this group here. Um, and these help control the level or the volume of the sound that you're recording. If you have the audio select setting on auto, the camera is going to adjust the audio levels for you automatically. So if you're recording and there's something that's very quiet, the levels will be turned up. And if you're recording and the sound is very loud, the levels will be turned down to avoid distortion. Um, while the settings can produce decent results, it's not the best way to have your audio set up because you're relying on the audio unit to make the decisions for you. When you push these switches over from auto to manual, you're then in control of the audio levels yourself. Um, and to control the audio levels, you use these dials here. There's one for each channel, channel one and channel two, and you just turn that up or down accordingly. You get better results when you're setting the audio levels yourself. Um, manually, but you do need to monitor the audio. Um, watch the audio level meters on the LCD monitor and also wear a pair of headphones so you can hear what's happening. What you're aiming for is sound that's neither too quiet nor too loud. So to set your levels, what you need to do is go back to your audio meters on your LCD monitor. Um, as you can see here, channel one is hitting the red or tickling the red as I call it, and that's a good thing. Um, channel 1's maybe a little bit too loud, as you can see it's um, going into two bars of red, so that might distort, so I might want to bring that one down, which I'll do now, I'll just knock that down. So now that's still in the red, if I bring that down, testing, one, two, three. Okay, so that's just hitting the red a little bit. Channel 2, on the other hand, is really way down in the green, and that's a little bit too quiet, so when it comes to editing, you might find that that audio is a bit too quiet. So I'll go to the dial on channel two and bring that level up. So testing one, two, three, bringing that up. And that's getting louder and louder. And now we're just about the same. It's a little bit quieter, but that's good. Um, and so that's the audio level set. When you're setting your audio levels manually, you need to be aware that the camera is not going to do the work for you. So if there are any sudden bangs or coughs or any unexpected noises, they will almost certainly peek up into the red and distort. But you don't need to worry too much about that. As long as your main volume level is set correctly, then the rest of your recording should be fine. Okay, moving along the audio unit here, you've got in the middle the audio input switches. Um, and we've got a switch there for input one and input two. So that's microphone one and microphone two. Um, the switch is divided into three. Up at the top, you've got line. Um, in the middle, you've got mic. And then finally at the bottom, you've got mic plus 48 volts. Um, for the most part, we're going to be using microphones rather than any other external audio equipment. Um, so let's focus on the mic section of the audio unit, the bottom two switches. Okay, microphones come in all different shapes and sizes, but what matters here is how the microphones are powered. Some mics need power, and they draw power from an external source, some don't. This mic here, which comes with the camera, does need to be powered, um, and that power is going to be drawn from the camera itself via the XLR cable. Um, so on the audio input switch, we need to make sure that input one is set to mic plus 48 volts, which is the standard amount of power that most microphones need. Um, if you're going to use an extra shotgun mic, like this one, um, this also needs external power. So if you were going to add this to the mix, you would also need to make sure that audio input 2 is also set to mic plus 48 volts as well. If you're using a mic that doesn't need external power, like those you see singers using on stage, then you'd make sure that the switch is set to the middle setting, which is mic. And then that means that there's no power going from the audio unit to the microphone. Finally, at the top, you have line, and you'd switch to this when you're taking sound from an audio mixer or a sound desk um, or something like that. When you are using line, be careful not to have the setting on 48 volts because when you do have that turned on, you're sending power down the cable. So you don't want to send power down the cable to the sound desk because then you could damage the circuitry, and that would mean that you get a very unhappy sound man chasing after you. Next along we've got channel 2 input, and by default this should be in the bottom position, which is input 2. In this position the camera is going to record two separate channels from two separate inputs. If you want to record two channels of audio from just one microphone, then you need to make sure that the channel 2 input switch here is in the up position on input 1. 
This is useful if you want to record your audio at different levels, which is a clever way of ensuring that you get good audio. Um, although it's something that you can only really do when you've got the audio select settings in manual. Okay, so let me show you how to do that. I'll just take the second microphone out. Right, so we've got a microphone going into input one and we've got the channel two input set to input one. So that means that channel two is gonna be fed from this microphone. If we look at the LCD monitor, you can see that we've got two channels of sound. It's set to auto, so the levels are exactly the same. They're both coming from this microphone and they're both being automatically controlled by the camera. If we switch that to manual, it means that we can control the audio levels. If we look at the meters now, they're quite different. You've got channel one is very loud and channel two is a bit lower. So what I wanna do is set these up so they're close but not identical. So I'll just knock channel one down a bit and knock channel two up a little bit. So what this means is that when we're recording, we've got channel two as a backup audio track, which is a little bit quieter. So when it comes to editing, we can listen to our audio. If channel one clips into the red too much, we've always got channel two, which is a bit quieter to use as backup. Another thing that you can do is you can set your one of your channels to auto. So if I've got channel one set to manual, I've set the level, I'm happy with that level. Um, if I set channel two to auto, it means that the camera is gonna take care of the audio level on that channel, which provides a bit of a safety net so that if channel one did clip or go into the red, then we've always got that to fall back on. Okay, so we've looked at all the audio settings and things like that. We're finally ready to start recording. I've got three record buttons, one on the LCD screen, one on top of the camera next to the zoom toggle, and one here at the back of the camera. And the reason we've got three record buttons is just to provide different ways of pressing record, really. So the first way is if you're holding it like this, you can press record here with your thumb or here with your finger. If you're holding the camera like this, it's probably easier to press record with this button here. When you press record, you'll notice a few things start to happen. So if I press record, standby turns to rec and the time code starts to count upwards. On the other side of the camera, you'll notice that the access light is flashing, which tells you that it's recording. And also, if I close that, on the other side of the camera, the SD card slots here, you'll notice that slot A is flashing green, which is telling you that the camera is recording to the SD card in here on slot A. If I wanted to stop recording, then we just press any one of the record buttons. I'll press this one. So if I press that, that will stop flashing eventually. Yeah, there you go. So that stopped recording there. So once you've filmed some footage, you're gonna to wanna to play it back and review it. To do that, we need to go round to the other side of the camera and back to the power dial. At the moment, it's in camera mode and we want to switch to media mode. To do that, we need to toggle the power dial up um, like so. You press it down and hold it. When you do that, you'll notice that this light changes. If I do it back, you'll see it switches to camera mode. And if I press and hold it again, it switches to media mode. When you do that, if you go to the viewfinder, open that up, you'll see now that we can see thumbnails of all the footage that we've recorded. Okay, now I'm gonna go over navigating around the thumbnail menu. You do that with this small little lever here. You press to the right to jump between the clips, right, left, up and down. You press the lever in to play the clip. If you press the lever in again, it will pause and it says down at the bottom that it's paused. If I press it again, it will start to play again. If I press the lever to the right while it's playing, it will fast forward through all of the clips. If I press it to the left, it will rewind through the clips. While it's fast forwarding or rewinding, if I press in, it will just start playing again. If I wanna jump backwards and forwards between each clip, I can press up and down. So if I press down, it will skip to the next clip. Down again, it will take it to the next clip. If I press up, it'll jump to the beginning of the clip that's playing 
if I press it up twice, it'll jump to the beginning and then jump back one. If I press pause, and then I move to the right or the left, I can skip through the frames. So right is forwards through the frames, one at a time, and left is backwards, one at a time. If you ever want to get back to the thumbnail menu, just press this button here up at the top, and that will take you back to the thumbnail menu. Once you've reviewed your footage, all you need to do now is take all this footage from the SD card and put it onto the computer for editing. There are two ways you can get your footage off the camera and onto your computer. Um, the first way is to use a USB cable like this one. Um, this isn't actually provided with the kit, but they are quite common. Um, it's a standard A to mini B connection. Um, and you take the mini B connection and you plug it into the back of the camera. Just here beneath the battery, you see a little flap which says HDMI and there's a USB symbol. If you pop that off, and then plug that in, oh, get it the right way around. And that should go in. And then you take this end and plug that into your computer. When you connect the cable to the computer and turn the camera on, a message appears on the LCD monitor, which is asking you if you wanna go into USB mode. Um, select change, and you should see the camera's SD card appear as a drive on the computer. If you're not gonna do it with the USB cable, then the other way to do it, to transfer your footage over onto the computer, is to go to the SD card slots and take out your SD card. Um, to do that, you just press it in and it'll pop out halfway. Take it out, make sure that you close that flap up. Then you take your SD card and you plug it into your computer. Um, some computers have got an SD card slot or sometimes you might need to use an SD card reader. Again, when you've plugged it in, the card should appear as a drive on your computer. Once you've accessed your footage, either directly from the card or through the USB cable, it's good practice to copy the entire contents of the card onto the computer, making sure that you maintain the file structure. Put the contents of the card into a clearly labeled folder. Um, I'd suggest using either the date or a brief description of the project that you were filming. It's not essential to copy the entire file structure of the card, but some editing software like Final Cut Pro 7 needs all the smaller data files on the card to process the video clips. Without these files, the software has trouble using the clips and so you can have problems with that. Once you've copied the contents of the card over onto your computer, don't forget to double check that you've got everything. Um, you might want to try playing back some of the clips to make sure that they're working properly and also check to make sure that the original folder that you've copied from and the new folder that you've created are the same size. Once you're sure that all your files have been successfully copied over onto the computer, you can delete the files off the SD card. The best way to do this is to format the SD card in the camera. Um, if I put this in slot A, and stick it in till it clicks, close up the flap, and then if we open up the LCD monitor and press the menu thumb button, that brings up the menu, and I want to navigate right down to media which is right down at the bottom. If I press in on the lever, and I will see the option to format media. If I press in and select that, I've got the option to choose either slot A or slot B. I'm gonna go with slot A because that's where I've put the card. Okay, so on this screen, you've got a bit of an overview of your card, and at the bottom there, you've got two options, either cancel or format. So I'm gonna select format and press the lever in, and this will wipe everything off the SD card so that you can start filming again. So there you have all the information that you need to operate the JVC HM150 in auto mode. The camera is very capable in this mode and you can do a lot with it, um, but with practice, I hope you'll soon start to build up your confidence and start to look into the more complex manual settings, which will really allow you to get the most out of the camera. Um, to help you on your way, we'll be making some follow-up videos that will cover some advanced features like exposure and white balance. So keep a lookout for those. In the meantime, have fun and goodbye.